Good evening, friends. Today we have a movie maker from Canada joining us. Uh, Sangeeta, welcome. Thank you, Meena ji. Thank you for having me. Uh, so it's really nice to have Sangeeta because I've known her for quite some time. We uh, connected through Candid Meena. And what I found is that, see, her documentaries are uh, very, really worth watching because, uh, in a sense, they are the change maker, you know, in uh, today's world. It's a unique and a very powerful documentary which talks about education in this century. And what are the kind of flaws, you know, that you'll find in uh, today's education system? Now, she's done an exceptional job by interviewing a lot of people who have the uh, experience and the acumen to talk about what can be changed in our present system to make it, uh, you know, more uh, what you call valuable for the not only the student, but also the parent and the teacher. So uh, with that uh, small introduction, I'll tell you a lot, lot a bit more, but first let me uh, say hello to her. Welcome, Sangeeta. Namaste, Meena ji. So nice to be here. Yeah. So Sangeeta is, so Sangeeta, let me just give them a brief about what you are doing. Okay. And uh, so uh, friends, Sangeeta is a multi-talented personality. Besides being a wife and a mother, she's an Indo-Canadian filmmaker. She holds a master's degree in psychology and is a certified positive psychology educator. She's a certified adult educator and has been an instructional designer and learning and development expert in the corporate world for more than a decade. She's also a certified Feng Shui consultant, a board member for Basis Education Foundation, and has a certificate from the Documentary Filmmaking Institute in Canada. A filmmaker for a cause, she says, Metal Films was born with a vision of telling simple, yet thought provoking, insightful and inspirational stories about people, places and events that have social relevance. She's been in the national field hockey uh, as a, a player there and continues to be an ardent uh, sports fan. Those who know her, that she possesses an incredible sense of humor, is a fantastic cook and a chai addict. She's also an animal lover and an ardent reader. She supports several animal rescues in India and Canada and volunteers her time to provide content and resources on Hindu heritage at the local board during Hindu Heritage Moment, Month. Her hard words, efforts, and commutation, people skills made it possible to get Hindu phobia formally included in the local school board's policy, making it the first school board in Canada to recognize Hindu phobia. She rocks an attitude of gratitude and credits, the unconditional love and support of her family and family. She says, I fortuitously realized my calling and purpose in life while facing some very unexpected, painful circumstances. I choose to be a go-giver instead of a go-getter. By making a difference through my work, in whatever capacity I can, my hope is to combine my life lessons and work philosophy with my unique skill set to get meaningful cinema. So that's a lot you have. <laughs> in your pocket and uh, there's a lot more you will be doing i'm sure because we met in bangalore and i've seen the way she works and this was despite a, a small calamity that happened in her life she did uh, you know balance both and i found uh, both the professional and personal side to her character so really nice to touch base with you sangeeta thank you meena ji i feel like uh, our connection too came that way right that there are so many parallels in our lives and I always say, I thank Sushant Singh Rajput for connecting us because that's how we actually connected um, because of the Sushant Singh Rajput movement. And, and we've been connected ever since. But uh, thank you for that wonderful intro. I feel like I wear too many hats sometime and I should get rid of some <laughs> because <laughs> it, it's a lot. And you again can relate to it. It's like a, a one woman army trying to yeah. do so many things. You know, you've done filmmaking, you do your you do journalism, you are an artist, um, you have your own program, you know, your promoting um, um, <laughs> the dance and culture through the Kathakali yes. programs. Your mom, you know, leads those programs. So you understand that sometimes I feel I wear too many hats and I need to, to slow down a bit. But yeah. I guess it's my passion. So I enjoy doing what I do. Yeah. So what uh, we found in Coburn Friends is that, see, as uh, uh, filmmakers, you know, both Sangeeta and myself, I found that there are quite a few problems that we may, you know, we face. The biggest being that, see, we are not, uh, it's not easy to get producers to back our films. Yeah. And usually we put in whatever we save 
into, into the film because we're passionate about it and we want the message to reach, you know, a, a, a larger audience. So I've also done a documentary and another film, but the second film is still in hold because of uh, financial constraints. And I know the kind of uh, financial constraints Sangeeta is also facing. So this uh, interview with her today is also an effort to tell people that please start putting money where it matters. These Bollywood uh, sort of movies are not going to get you anywhere. These sort of uh, you know movies and documentaries that Sangeeta is making will make a big difference in your child's life. You know, and that I mean, our children are the next generation who are going to change and shape India. So it's very important that you know who you are financing and what is the budget you're looking at. These are all small budgets, but the more you encourage such filmmakers, you know, it becomes much easier for them. So Sangeeta, back to you. So let's uh, talk about your journey. As I talk to you about, uh, you know, your life, I'll also be showing snippets of her life on PowerPoint. So please, friends, bear with me if I have, uh, if you have some issues there. So uh, yes, Sangeeta, please start with how did you get interested in, uh, you know, filmmaking and documentary making? I, I guess I, I was always, um, always inspired by storytelling. I think even yeah. when I was a kid and, and I mean, unfortunately, like most of us, I, I used to be a big Bollywood fan too. And I used to watch all those movies. And I remember my dad would sometimes, um, I don't know if he was teasing me or actually mad at the time, but he kept telling me that, oh my God, you know, um, you do you plan to do a PhD in Bollywood? Like, you know, you need to, I was such a fan. Um, and I look back and think, what was I thinking, right? But anyway, I think it was never being in front of the camera. It was the storytelling aspect of being behind the camera. So a script writing, you know, having a vision of how to tell the story and, and being behind the camera. So I think at some point in my life when I, um, I was in the corporate world and I took a short break to be with home with my second one because, you know, both my children are 12 years apart. And I was at the peak of my career when my second one came along. And I thought, you know, I, I deserve to give her the time that I gave my son. I didn't go to work till he was in school. So I said, I'm going to take a short break from the corporate world and then go back when she's in full day school. But that never happened. And that was a time when I experimented uh, because filmmaking was always a passion. I went back to film school here in Toronto and I said, let me see. And, you know, uh, thankfully my husband was a huge support system for me. Um, and he encouraged me saying, you know, if not now, then when, once you go back to the corporate life again, you'll never get the time because you know how it is. It's, it's a full-time job. And uh, when you are doing something creative, then you need that creative energy to flow. And it doesn't happen when you're doing a full-time job. So I went to film school and I loved what I learned. And I experimented with Gurukul in the sense that I was visiting my hometown. It was the 25th uh, get together, anniversary get together for our school batchmates actually. Um, and they had, they had planned a reunion of sorts. And so I went by and just because I love being the, behind the camera, I took the camera with me and a camera person. I said, oh, we'll capture some of these moments and I'll put something together like a collage and music, you know, just something that they can all, all keep. And then I started hearing people talk about my mother, who was the teacher, and the things that they remembered about her just blew my mind. I mean, I, of course, remember her and miss her because she was my mother. But here's here's these students who are 40 years later uh, remembering uh, the, the minutest things about her and how she impacted their life. She was a kindergarten teacher. And that's where the, the, the seed was born to make Gurukul and say, you know, I'm getting curious, like, uh, the students in the school system right now in my hometown, are they feeling the same way that we feel about our teachers from 40 years ago or has the system changed? And that's how Gurukul started. I honestly thought that I'll make this film. As you know, it was all out of pocket. So there was practically zero budget, but you know, it just, I kept spending and spending as I was making a lot of mistakes too along the way. And I had to make two trips from here. But when it finally got done, I was like, even if my friends and family watch it and, you know, they like it, that my job's yeah, done. Absolutely. Then it went into 31 film festivals up until now it's, and across the globe. So it's not just film festivals in India, but US, Canada, Europe, Japan, China. It's been pick, picked up everywhere. I haven't been able to put it on a, on a YouTube or any other public platform because film festivals, um, you know, if it's out there in, in a public forum, then you don't qualify. And so it's almost four years now, and it just still gets uh, picked into film festivals. So that was what told me that I think I'm on the right track. And I've always wanted to make a difference. Maybe it's a, it's a drop in the ocean, what I do. I mean, there's so many amazing people out there who do great work. But I felt like cinema is a great way for me 
to connect with larger audiences and, and get the message out there. So my biggest focus is always education because education psychology is my background. And under the umbrella of education, my passion, passionate topics, mental health, animals, and environment. These, I think these are the three where my attention always, um, you know, gets focused on. So even my next one, which is Mitti, it's a sto story of a local farmer. She's a Sikh girl over here in Canada. And I thought, oh my God, I'm going to have to tell her story because I find these are like community heroes, people who are making a difference and no one even knows about them, right? So we just launched the trailer for Mitti and um, we'll see how it does. And I have other three films, like you said, the one I met you for in Bangalore. Mm -hmm. um, we've uh, That's a, almost a part two of Gurukul because Gurukul did so well and I literally just touched the tip of the iceberg with Gurukul because education is such a vast topic. And so I said, now I want to go back and take a deep dive into ancient Indic knowledge systems mm -hmm. and uh, speak to people who have the expertise on the topic, go and film at some Gurukuls, which I started, that's when I met you and I interviewed you too. And uh, then unfortunately my dad was hospitalized. So I had to cancel the rest of the filming. Um, and then now I have to reschedule. But, but it's the same thing that you said earlier. It's the funding. So I've already spent so much out of pocket. And I know people do tell me, why don't you apply for grants? And I've tried. There are a lot of grants here. It's never easy because yeah. sometimes it's also who you know, to be honest. Mm -hmm. But it's also about the kind of films you're making. So if I'm making something dark and something violent or you know something morbid. sexual, yes. then it I think it gets, my, it gets their attention. But my films are too simple. Yeah. <laughs> so and I'm they trying. have a message. Mm. And I'm trying and I'm learning. I'm taking workshops here to understand how to apply better for grants. So and here, yeah, mm -hmm. Sagita, so I'd just like to interrupt a bit because what you said is so relevant when you said that, see, uh, you know, a certain kind of movies are accepted very fast. This is what we've noticed in the OTT platforms as well. Yes. Because one thing I want to say is that, see, when I, uh, you know, wanted to uh, give them the documentary, which won four awards, including the National Award, Making of a Maestro, yes. when I approached them, uh, you know, they said that, see, this kind of documentary won't work. See, you're talking about a Padmashri dancer, you know, who's a top name in, the, in Kathakali. And uh, his life has been like a turbulent uh, life, you know, where he's wanted to commit suicide, do so many things. And these people see that, see, it uh, doesn't have a market. And mm -hmm. what has a market then? Okay. Are you mm -hmm. talking about the trash that they show on OTT? Yes. You see? It is. So what you say is so relevant. Yes. Okay. I've seen your film. I've seen your documentary. And I remember even, um, you know, posting about it in social media. It's a beautiful film and everyone should watch it. And I'm not surprised that it won't get accepted on OTT. Those kind of films will never get accepted. But for me, I've had a lot of people give me advice and suggestions to oh, change it, make it about this, add some, you know, you know, some masala <laughs> into it. <laughs> I'm like, I'd rather not make films because yeah, see, exactly. I, I, didn't, I didn't get into filmmaking to become famous. If yeah. that happens, you know, that's just part and parcel of uh, the, the, the cinema world. But mm. that was not what motivates me or inspires me to keep doing this. So I said, if I have to now change my entire vision and passion and make it, you know, uh, you know, what's popular out there just because I can get on. I mean, that's not me then. Then I, I'm not being honest to myself. I may as well. I'll, I'll be happy to just pack it up and just take care of my family and take care of animals and do some farming, I'll be equally happy. Because it's like, you know, it's like choosing between, you know, when, uh, when I had a career choice, whether to, uh, you know, choose advertising or journalism, you know, advertising is all crap, you know, and journalism is where you can reach out to people through your voice, you know, yes. so you have to do something that, you know, really, you know, touches your soul. Exactly. And I mean, at this stage and age of my life, I don't want to make that compromise. So I may as well pack up and not make films if it comes down to that. Um, and I always tell people, I mean, I'm learning too. So I'm hoping that going forward, I can apply for more grants and I'll get some grants once I know the knack of it. But unfortunately, what happens is if you started making a film already, and it may be a great film, you cannot apply for grants. It's only for future products. And so I have already three films on the floor and the short films I'm able to manage locally out of pocket. But Moolam, which I came to film in India and met you for, I had to do a lot of domestic travel with the crew. So now it's not just paying the crew for the work they're doing, but it's their hotel, their airfare, their food, yeah. their travel. That all adds up so fast. And I had to travel to six, seven cities in, in India. So now it's come to a screeching halt. 
also i have enough content that i can edit it and make a film out of it I, but i don't think it will be fair to the people yeah, who have spoken on exactly. camera i mean you, i interviewed you there are some big names in there too there's raji malhotra ji there's kushal mehra there's sahana singh vijaya vishwanath and dr dk hari and hema i want to do justice to them also because they have put the faith in me and and given me the interviews so i know if i rush it um it'll it'll not be a good product so i that's why i'm taking some time i'd rather wait and do it right um so fingers crossed and i always tell people not everybody can help you financially right so yeah. those who can great if you do that because every little bit counts even if it's your coffee money a week and you say okay i'm going to put in you know that coffee money for a week it helps but i say the least people can do friends and family can do is subscribe to our channel yes. follow us on social media that goes a long way to spread the word for us so help is not always financial right so yeah. that's where i'm at right now three films on the see, floor see this is what i don't understand sagita that uh, see people are not have no qualms in you know going for dinner at a mall or spending so much on coffee or you know having a good make cuisine but for something like this they feel that see they need not spend when they know that the person on the other side has made such an effort and is trying to reach out to you with a strong message you mm. know this is what what i find very very strange about indians uh, in in our case you know we run this uh, channel called candle mina and you know uh, we've been doing so much of research trying to get out you know things that people don't really uh, know about and uh, you know we find that see we get very let, little support but mm. then that doesn't stop us from going doing what we really want to do yeah. which is exactly what you're doing yeah. now sagita taking on from an uh, to another point uh, you know on your career see you've been meeting a lot of top educationalists people who really matter what are, what is this what is wrong with the present education system in india and what are the things that you need you, these people say that they need uh, to be changed that need to be changed i feel like one is this whole mental health aspect you know uh, that is across the board because i have spoken to people here in the us and in india and that's a common thread so i don't know if it's this generation not understanding their struggles and vice versa if it's like lack of communication they are so there's i think that conversation and communication has to start so mental health is a big one and this whole uh, i mean this is not i'm not saying this is my personal view this is just gathering um you know what i have from from my interviews is this whole uh, wokeism um in that has come into schools too so i feel like you know bringing religion into school um you know and gender ideologies and teach sanskrit uh, yeah so it, it's like you know what there's the political aspect of things and there's children education and they they should be you know it, it's a sacred fabric and i feel we've lost that sacredness but Uh, it's really heartening to see because i started uh, the idea of mulam came to me in 2019 when gurukul had started doing so well i started writing the script for mulam right there and then i thought oh i'm going to go to, go to india and start filming and then covid hit us <laughs> so uh, travel was practically you know stopped for over a year and i kept waiting and waiting and now it's two years and then i came came down to film and i saw even in the two years that i, I was waiting to come to india um a lot of this whole gurukul parampara is is coming back which is very heartening to see yes and indeed. i have had the privilege to visit a few there are a few more on my list and it's wonderful to see the work they are doing because you know they're managing to to kind of blend the the ancient with the modern and that's the yeah. right way to go because there are things that children are dealing with today that probably they didn't uh, back in those days so being realistic about it and creating that balance so i think that really helps from a mental health perspective the whole gurukul aspect of because our education system was very um, well rounded it was very holistic and i think that's the gap today is the education system is not holistic at all uh, we've lost connection to everything be it relationships people nature environment i mean if you even think of when we grew up as kids we used to play out in the mud you know every day we were out playing and now i see so many kids in, sometimes i used to meet even my kids and i'm like oh there's a bug and oh there's a machchar and uh, they don't want to put their hands it. in the soil <laughs> and i'm like what is this so this, <laughs> this is a disconnection to environment yeah, yeah. i understand technology is a part and parcel of life today so we can't tell them that oh just no technology but at the same time it's scary to see that do we know where our food is coming from we don't know all these things our farmers we go to the store package food we get it in so 
Yeah, I think the biggest thing is disconnection to everything, be it relationships, value systems, most importantly, disconnection to nature. And that is the biggest gap in our education system. So when you're uh, attending these film festivals, these inter international film festivals, and, you know, being recognized, you know, as a filmmaker, Indian filmmaker, see, uh, it would have given you uh, a lot of self-confidence. Uh, tell us, what, what have you learned from these uh, festivals that has, you know, made you... Uh, you know, sort of uh, expand, you know, your knowledge. It, it, it's been interesting. So I am, a, I'm a very boring person like that. Like I'm a sports freak. I love animals, but you tell me to get ready and go to an event or a festival. That's I'm just here to push me to do that. So I honestly don't love the environment in that sense. Like I'll go there because I have to, because it, I don't want to come across as rude. You picked my film, you invited me and I don't show up. It's not because I'm arrogant. It's just, and, uh, I've, you know, all the small talk and I can't do that. So sometimes I'm a misfit over there, um, you know, and I'm See, also... But that's, a, but that's the problem, Sangeeta, with most <laughs> creative people. See, yeah. they, they work best when they're alone yeah. and they are creative at their best when they're alone. And all this PR work and, you know, uh, mingling is quite a daunting task. It is. So that's something you're facing. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. Because, you know, I am, I am very authentic. I'm very black and white as a person. What you see, what you get. And so I feel over there, if I have to pretend to yeah. be somebody I'm not or like something, I, I have a hard time. I struggle with it. And I think as I'm getting older, it's getting harder to do that <laughs> because, you know, you get like, you're like, okay, I don't need to do this. But it's 50-50. I remember my professor in film school here making that same comment to me that Sangeeta, if you know, we had to scale on 1 to 100, 50 for creativity, there's 50 for marketing as a filmmaker. You get 50 out of 50 on the creative, but I'm worried about you in terms of you are <laughs> terrible at marketing yourself. And I'm like, I know that. And, yeah. uh, you know, so some people tell me hire somebody and I'm like, hiring anybody also needs a budget. I don't have a budget. Yeah, and not only point. that, uh, what, what I've noticed, Sangeeta, is that, you know, even if you hire, their heart is not in it. You know, no. see, you put years of work in whatever is your baby, you know, yeah. and the way they convey it is totally different. And it actually kills whatever you have done. You know, true. and I am not saying about everybody, but most of the people. Yeah, true. They have to understand, uh, you know, what your vision is and who you are. Um, and you're right. Like, But, you know, the, then the social media aspect of it suffers. People tell me, you don't even talk about. So I'll have like, I have probably have 17 subscribers now on my YouTube channel because I don't have the time to promote it and talk about it. Uh, and then someone says, hire somebody. I said, see, when I start getting grants, I can budget that in to hire somebody on contract to just help me with my social media handles, right? But I'm not in, in that position right now. So I just want to keep putting money where I, I want to, which is making my films. And every little bit for me also counts. So if I if I have to pay somebody X, Y, Z money, I'll be like, you know what, I can, this will take care of my entire filming schedule for, you know, a short film. I'm just going to do that. So hopefully in time, it, I'll get there. But... Uh, you're right. It's uh, because the time we live in, right? It's about not just your work now. It's your uh, how you come across on social media. How many followers do you have? Like, are you a popular? That counts. Even film festivals, actually, I've heard in talking to people, look at they go and check your um, yes social you know, in media. Fact, when I when I wanted to uh, you know uh, uh, market my distribute my second movie, they, the first thing they told me is that is there any comedian, you know? Huh? So I said no, there's no comedy. Second, they asked, is there any dance, you know, like item dance? Mm. You know? So all these people who come, like, you know, Urvashi Rotela now, <laughs> they have so much of importance, you know. So I said, no, no, it's not that kind of movie. And then we can't uh, distribute it, you know. Oh my so gosh. that's the kind of ideology. But yeah. it's changing, of course, uh, yeah. better things are happening. Now here, uh, on the, uh, you know, uh, last uh, bit of note, I would like to ask you, without the support of your family, you wouldn't have reached so far. So could you tell us something about the kind of support that you've got from your family in this uh, trees of yours? Yes, yes. Oh, my God. I say it at every event, too. And my husband, too, he doesn't like to be front and center. My kids detest when I share their pictures. So this is why I don't share their pictures, because they make a big fuss about it. I could not, and I, not, I don't just say this, is I could not do this without them. Uh, especially my husband, who I always call is my best friend. So every festival I go to or every film I make, I have to make a mention somewhere in the film at the end to thank him because he won't come in the front. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I couldn't. I quit my full-time corporate job where I was at the peak of my career to, to do this. So not only did I lose a paycheck, uh, I am now st spending money out of pocket to do this work. So I mean, how many people get that kind of support? So touch wood. I don't have a huge family in the sense that my mom's no more. I was the only child, so it's just my dad. 
and uh, I, so, so we can I'm just, not, uh, how about going through these pictures and you could tell us like, uh, oh, this. you know, yes, yes. Uh, this is, this is a shot, I think it's the candidate shot one of the crew members took while I was filming for Gurukul, uh, okay. it was at that time, yeah. yeah. Oh, this is uh, at Raji Malhotraji's place, I was setting up the, um, the cameras uh, for his interview for Mulam. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this, we recently launched the trailer of Mitti here in Toronto. It was a private, uh, also we screened Gurukul. Yeah. And uh, on the same day, on 8th October this year, we um, uh, we wanted uh, to launch the trailer of Mitti. So we had a screening by invite only. And I've tried to list, these are some of the film festivals that Gurukul got picked into. These are some of the awards it got. And yeah. so this is a screenshot from that event. So friends here, yeah, we'll be attaching the link to her trailer as well as her channel. So please subscribe and watch her trailer. Thank you. This is at an event last year. Uh, we had nominated uh, Rajiv Malhotraji for an award at the uh, at an event here last year. And so I think this is a short from there. <laughs> this, you know, Isana Singhji, she's part of Moolam too. So um, I, I bought all her books. And uh, this was after we had finished our um, I think our, our interview, recording our okay. interview. <laughs> um, this, some of you may know, you guys have seen them. This is in Toronto too. Um, this is Daniel and Wyatt. Probably have seen him on. Uh, yeah, this is from the screening. So what I wanted to do is at the screening, not just show the film, but I also wanted to do a panel discussion after to get some value. And we'd invited a lot of educators um, yeah. and parents. And so if you see, I wanted a diverse panel. We have Tahir Goraji there, who you know is um, on Stag TV. He's a fantastic yes. author, journalist. The other person there, Trustee Pei, he's an amazing trustee at uh, the Toronto District School Board. We have Tasha Keridan, she's a very well-known media personality mm -hmm. in Toronto, and Kushal Mehra, uh, who everyone knows him. So we did a panel discussion, and the audience had a lot of parents and teachers. It was, it was a, I think, one of the best panel discussions, the interaction. So yeah, it okay. went very well. Yeah. Okay. This is at a festival that uh, Tahir Guraji and his wife here, um, Alima ji, had uh, planned this year in June. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, Nalanda Festival. It's from there. And yeah. This is the cover of my book that my daughter um, illustrated. So she was 10 years old when she did this. Uh, the book, children's book, was written in memory of our yellow lab Simba, whose picture you see there. We yeah. lost him. Uh, he passed away in 2021. And I, I, I think she, I didn't know... She, I didn't know how to teach my 10 year old what death is, right? It's hard. Yeah. And I found that I was the one moping and crying more and she wasn't. Yeah. So that concerned me even more because she was attached to him. Yeah. And I noticed because like you, she's an art, she, you're an artist, she strives to be an artist. She mm -hmm. kept drawing uh, pictures of him everywhere, even on paper napkins and, and everywhere. So I, I gave her the idea. I said, let's write a book and uh, I'll write the story. You do the, the illustrations and then whatever, uh, profits we make or proceeds, we will donate to animal rescues as okay. our gratitude. So that's, so that's really is. good. Oh. And this is designed by my daughter too at 11. She oh. uh, designed the poster of Mitti for me. This is a local uh, farmer. She's a Sikh girl and uh, we're going to oh, release yeah. that film soon. Um, these So uh, uh, um, Gurukul was first screened at the South Asian Literature and Art Festival in California. And these were some of the reviews people posted after watching Gurukul there at the screening. Um, this is a local newspaper in India who did my interview. Yeah, in okay. Baroda. Yeah. And this is another, uh, I think it's Indian Express, right? Or Times of India did an interview. Yeah. More, more reviews. Yes. This is my dad. We were at the screening of Gurukul in Baroda. I did a special screening there uh, because okay. it was in memory of my mom, right? So that was our yeah. hometown. Yeah. Mm. And um, that's our. Uh, he was a rescue. He came all the way from India to be part of our family. We brought him home because he's so hard, his story. You know how I love animals. So I adopted yeah. him. Unfortunately, he was not well. He passed away recently. So that's that, yeah. So that was a, a beautiful. Uh, you know, sort of uh, excerpts from your life and uh, wonderful work that you're doing, Sangeeta, you. and continue to do it. I'm sure, you know, the fire within you will continue to uh, grow and you will be uh, spreading your message far and wide. And there'll be a lot of people who will encourage you on your path. And we certainly are there for you all the time. I whenever know. You, uh, yeah. 
whenever you have something new or something you win, do come to us and tell us and proudly tell us what you've done. Thank you, Meena I know you're always, always supporting me and Ned, sir, and Jay, and I am always grateful for that. And uh, I, I have been fortunate uh, to get a lot of support from friends and family here too. You know, sometimes strength, you know, is, is not the numbers, it's the quality, right? So I have been very fortunate. I have a lot of people like you who are constantly inspiring me, you know, wonderful friends and my husband and my dad. So I'm blessed for that. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And good night. Good and night. Jai Hind. Jai Hind. <laughs>